You're listening to Never Go Against the Family, a podcast by the University of Northern Iowa Family Business Center. In this episode, Dan Binken interviews Joel Weiler. Joel serves as Human Resource Operations Manager at his family business, Weiler, a manufacturing company in Knoxville, Iowa. Joel had a non-traditional route to working for his family, and even practiced as a dentist for five years before joining up. He talks about Weiler's forward-thinking family governance and communication structures, among other challenges unique to family businesses. Keep listening to learn more about Joel and his journey back to the family business. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Never Go Against the Family. I'm Dan Binkin, and I'm joined today by Dr. Joel Weiler, former practicing dentist in the uh, central Iowa area, who now is with his family company as a second gen leader. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Dr. Weiler, it's just uh, pretty crazy to say Dr. Weiler, and you're working for your family business, which is not a dental practice. So if you could, uh, our audience would love to hear a little bit about how you made that change, why you made that change, um, and and just how, how you maybe started the path that you started on to begin with. Maybe we could start there. So I assume you took all the science classes you could in high school and then uh, probably ended up at the U of I, but that's a guess. Can you kind of take it from there? Yeah, so um, first off, it's been a while since anyone's called me doctor, so thanks for that. I kind of forgot what that sounded like, but, uh, but yeah, I think I was probably the last one to know that this was going to happen. Um, kind of people looking, uh, from the outside in, it seemed to make more sense to than me. And I just kind of had blinders on and was chasing what was in front of me. But, um, I guess my starting at the beginning, my parents, uh, started Weiler, which is a manufacturing company. Um, we do make asphalt paving equipment and, and forestry equipment um, down here in Knoxville, Iowa. And, you know, I was 13 when they, uh, when they started the company, um, spent pretty much every summer growing up and, and through uh, most of undergrad, spending my, uh, my summers here working, doing every, every odd job under the sun. Um, I think the the tactic was to spend nine months of the year coming up with a list of stuff that no one else wanted to do. And then they <laughs> cross the table to me at the beginning of the summer. So leave that for the kids, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And wouldn't trade it for anything. I mean, it was great, great experiences and, um, you know, stuff that I still lean on today, just having some background in, in manufacturing, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, we were a small company when we started and, um, you know, had, Four employees in 2000 and have um, you know 530 in Knoxville now. So, you know, going back to middle school and high school, math was the one subject that I just did not care for at all. Then didn't didn't, uh, didn't come naturally to me. And my dad was an engineer by trade, and so I kind of thought if I wanted to be in the family business, I was going to need to be an engineer, and and that seemed like there was a lot of math involved. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And my parents were great with all three of us kids, um, encouraging us to do, you know, whatever we were passionate about. Um, and really, if anything, about, I would say they went further towards talking us out of joining the family business and kind of highlighted the the negatives about that. Sure. As far as just, you know, your responsibility to the community and your employees. And, you know, it's not a job that you get to leave, you know, on your desk when you leave and go home for the day. So, um, they really hammered that home with us. And, um, so yeah, I, I originally was going to go be a medical doctor. Um, and then I got in a fight with the wood floor playing basketball and, uh, knocked two front teeth out and, uh, had a good experience at, at the dentist that day and a bad experience at the ER. And so, um, so yeah, changed course and got into dentistry, um, and really just kind of was full speed ahead on that. Um, didn't really think a whole lot about joining the family business at any point. I mean, it was discussed in our in our family board meetings as we got that going. But, you know, I, I just kind of made it clear to the family that, um, you know, I didn't think the business needed me. And I, you know, liked the, the path that I was heading down. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and were your, do you, you have a, at least one sibling, I know. Do you have other siblings too? 
Yep. So I've got two sisters. Okay. Um, middle. Um, so I get picked on a lot. And yeah, good for you. It's uh, it's been fantastic. It's kind of a sidebar. I mean, I I work with my sisters um, pretty much every day. I mean, they both uh, they both work here. My older sister beat me here by a few years, and then my uh, my younger sister joined the company in January of this year. So cool. You know, at different times, I, I work with my my older sister on on a number of different things, um, just in our roles within the company. Um, and about every day, I think actually my younger sister and I were looking at our Outlook report out or whatever, and where our um, we collaborate most with each other out of anyone in the company, which is a little depressing because anytime I get an email from her, it's usually bad news. But um, <laughs> and just fantastic working with them. Um, so but seven or eight years ago, you thought you would be filling cavities, right? Or 10 years ago, I don't know how long it's been, but yeah, and was filling cavities. So I mean, it was a uh, practicing dentist for a little over five years. Um, that's kind of a long time. Like that's not, oh, let's see if I like this or not. And uh, oh, I don't like this. Mom and dad, do you have something I could do over there? I feel like at that point, you kind of had, you know, probably established patience and you know, they were looking forward to seeing Dr. Dubs every six months or whatever, right? And that was the hardest part, um, honestly, because I uh, I would say one of my, I don't know if you call it a strength or a weakness, but one of the things I enjoy doing is just interacting with people. Um, yeah. That's why I got into dentistry. I mean, you get them trapped in a chair, they can't go anywhere. They had to listen to me talk. So, right. So I really enjoyed that. And, you know, I lived in the community I was practicing in. So I was seeing these people at the grocery store and at kids sporting events and, and all this stuff. And I, I ate that up. Yeah. And the day to day stuff I actually really enjoyed, too. So it was kind of a, a weird place to be in um, because I, I loved being a dentist. I, I wasn't you know, I never got to the point of that that burnout that gets common with um, with dentists. Yeah. You know? I mean, it was taxing, but I, I enjoyed it every day. I looked forward to, to going to work every day. And really the tipping point for me, um, my the dentist that I worked for who owned the practice was a fantastic mentor to me and um, really took me under his wing and, and about treated me like family. And going into that arrangement, you know, we had talked about um, me buying into the practice, um, you know, four or five years after we kind of had our, our uh, engagement period. Yeah, make sure it works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we started having those conversations. And that's when, I don't know, it hit me like a bus. It was like, man, I'm, I'm calling my dad every other week to see what's going on over at the factory. I was, you know, having that cushy dentist schedule I had every other Friday off. So I was working part time for the company too, just to kind of keep my fingers in it. Okay. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, it just, like I said, it just kind of hit me that, you know, I really felt like I was going to regret it if I didn't give, um, give the family business a shot. I mean, we had grown to the point where I didn't have to do a lot of math. Um, <laughs> they could find somewhere to keep me away from a calculator here. So, um, so that really led to about 18 months of, of soul searching and really open conversations with, um, with my boss at the time who, you know, as we were talking about buying in and yeah. he was really invested in me. I mean, it's, it's hard in small town, Iowa to find, a, you know, an associate that you right. want is you know gonna gonna take over your practice so he had he had a lot of eggs in that basket he was I mean fantastic super understanding and um so we talked openly throughout that and um like I said a lot of soul searching and and finally decided I just couldn't bring myself to sign on the dotted line to you know to to hitch my wagon to uh to a practice and, and keep doing that so sure. um so yeah, I mean, thankfully, since that was a drawn out process, I was able to stick around until he found someone to replace me because that was kind of one of the conditions I had is that I wasn't, I mean, within reason, I wasn't going to leave him high and dry and right patience and, and all that. So, um, so yeah, but just uh, kind of, I think if I, my memory is a little fuzzy on this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we had a family board meeting and uh it was it was around Christmas time had a family board meeting you know I kind of doubled down on saying I wasn't joining the practice and then my older sister called me the next day and said hey you know we you obviously enjoy what you're doing we support whatever you want to do but are, are you sure you're not going to regret it if you don't um 
you know, if you don't come give this a try at some point. And I said, like, gosh, dang it. She, <laughs> like I said, I, I was the last one to know, I feel like. So, um, and that's really what got me started down that path. And uh, yeah, I mean, it took a lot of uh, not, not encouragement. I don't know what word I'm looking for, but a lot of conversations with my parents. Yeah. You know, does the business need me? Like, you guys don't owe me anything. I mean, some exploration there, right? Yeah. So is, I mean, are you guys making a seat for me or is this something where I, I can really add value? And then, you know, with a lot of back and forth on that, this, you know, you could figure out how to drill, you know, 0.1 millimeters out of a tooth and, you know, make that look good. And so we're, we're pretty confident you can figure something out here. So, <laughs> so what you mentioned that you were kind of working a little bit part-time for the business as you were in practice. So how did that come about? What kinds of things were you doing to kind of keep your, as I think you said, kind of keep your thumb on things or keep your eye involved? How, what was that like? What were you doing? And, and how did that come about that you even had that opportunity? Um, so if I remember right, there was a, um, for a few months, I was helping out on the payroll side, which is ironic since, uh, you know, we talked about math. Yeah, math, yeah. Um, Your friend. Not being the deal for me, but um, we had someone out on maternity leave, and you know, rather than hire some temp help or something, I helped. I helped out with uh, okay um, timesheets for a while, and then yep. took on whatever random projects came up, whether it was you know looking at capital expenditures or um, different things we had coming up. So sure, um, okay, enough to keep uh, keep someone involved in the business, and, you know, keep learning the new faces that were coming on because I used to be able to walk through and I could tell you everyone's name in the plant and in the office. And, um, you know, as we had grown, I had lost some of that. And um, so, yeah, it was just kind of Fridays and weekends, um, mostly, mostly working from home, just on different projects and things, but I'd come in and wander around a little bit too. So, um, so yeah, it was a unique opportunity that way to where it was like, you know, whatever time you can put towards it is fine. And you're obviously growing as a company that whole time. So there's probably things you're seeing, you know, changing as you're coming in one Saturday and then a few, you know, a month later or whatever, a few months later, I'm guessing. I mean, that's, that's prideful, right? As a family member. And that certainly played into it. You know, it's, it was just intoxicating the, you know, the growth that we were going through. I mean, borderline catastrophic growth at that, at that point. Um, and just, yeah. there was, there was a year we hired over a hundred people and just, um, you know, just seeing that stuff escalate and we at, kept adding on to the building and it's, man, wow. this is really fun and, and fun to be a part of. So. And you mentioned the, another thing too here, doc, you mentioned, uh, um some family meetings that you guys had i um i didn't anticipate asking you this but since you brought it up i think that's really cool that you were doing that that must have helped you also stay and your siblings stay not only together but and and knowing and hearing everything firsthand about what's going on but also well just knowing i guess and having some knowledge it wasn't like you were just coming over strictly to have you know, a couple beverages and, and watch a game with your dad or something like that. But you guys were having, I'm assuming some sort of a informal, formal type of family meeting on a regular basis to kind of, can you kind of talk through that a little bit and how that, I would, yeah, so the I mean, governance played a role in, in things. Credit to my parents on that. I mean, they were very forward looking on that. Um, I can't mm -hmm. remember when exactly we started. Um, our, our board of directors, which, you know, not necessarily best practice, but it's, it's just us family members on the board. Sure. Um, so we started having those quarterly meetings and, you know, Pat really looked all three of us kids in the eye and said, Hey, you know, you guys are all off doing your own thing, which is awesome. You seem to be enjoying what you're doing. But I mean, my older sister was a corporate attorney for state farm and my younger sister was a civil engineering professor at Iowa state. So we were kind of off on these non -related. really smokes. You guys weren't just subway uh, sandwich artists, were you? Okay. Yeah, we we got lucky, I guess. But um, that's cool. So you had very, very good careers. Yeah, and I mean, of anyone, at least my sister had some law experience that she could uh, she could bring to the table. And I guess you know, my younger sister Caitlin, having some engineering background, I was kind of the odd duck that you know, not a ton of crossover from uh, from dentistry to manufacturing. 
not your typical career path, but sure. You can uh, find cavities on lunch breaks. That's well, there's a lot of people have been at, are still asking for that a little bit. They think that'd be a great uh, employee, but <laughs> it could just uh, set up a chair and, you know, maybe on Fridays do so. And knock a couple out, right? Yeah. yeah but, uh, uh, but yeah, my, my dad kind of looked us all in the eyes and said, Hey, you know, none of you are involved in that's fine. But you know, if this, if this is going to stop being a family business, when I retire, like that's, I'm going to manage this differently than, you know, if, if I'm building for the future, you know, if I'm building this place to, you know, eventually sell it or be, or eventually have someone else outside the family run it, I, I'm looking through a different lens than yeah. if you guys want to be actively involved in it. So um, that was probably a, you know, a good one to two year discuss ongoing discussion of, you know, us, us selling him that, that we did want it to stay in the family was the first thing that we decided. And then, you know, over time, we all, all decided that we wanted to be a part of the day-to-day -day operations. That's pretty cool. And I'm sure some of that came from being a close family in general already. Right. And, 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 and recognizing the opportunity and the ability to be, even closer through the business i'm sure right or we're we're stupid lucky i mean it's i've i've seen and read and and you know like i said seen firsthand how um some dysfunctional family dynamics can can get in the way of of one your family and the and the business yeah we're just insanely blessed that we all get along outside of here you know we can we can put it on the shelf yeah we talk we're not great about not talking shop sometimes when we'll get together but not to the point where our spouses complain too much about it okay uh, but yeah we go on uh on family trips together still the um you know my parents and my sisters and our spouses so we i mean we choose to spend time together yeah. that's really cool it's really healthy um this is really cool i just hearing your story here a little bit about um you know for other families who sent their kids off to do whatever i think one message I'm hearing from this, and I've heard from others in your shoes too, is that sometimes mom and dad are so, um, you know, it doesn't have to be mom or dad, but the generation prior is so wanting to be protective of, of the next gen's freedoms and abilities to make their own choices career-wise and otherwise, life, you know, where they live, et cetera, that they often subdue the opportunities that exist within the business to a point where uh, that next gen doesn't think there are any opportunities or doesn't or 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 doesn't feel like there's a spot to bring it up you know maybe and they're making assumptions on their end of well mom and dad don't want me around here or <laughs> um they've got other plans for this business or they you know whatever whatever a hundred different assumptions are they can't stand my wife and they don't want us to move back or whatever it might be right or they can't stand my husband and so um, I think that's really great just to, to hear from your perspective that one, you know, one underlying takeaway I'm getting from this is just the openness of communication and the, and the fact that that communication doesn't just take place one time as far as your dad saying, hey, do you guys want in or out, you know, and it was like, and it was like one little hour long conversation. It was over the course of time and it was, you know, probably I'm sure bringing in in your spouses and their opinions and you having conversations in your own households and and with your siblings and can we make this work and how long does that you know that that doesn't happen in a day or a weekend right and it takes a little time but just knowing that you know each generation is kind of reaching toward the middle to have those kinds of conversations I feel like is so critical for you know for what you guys have done obviously I mean there's there's always the potential that you could still be a practicing dentist right now right that type of thing you know, I actually went all in. I uh, I let my license expire the first renewal period. Really? You no, know, all gas, no brakes. So, okay. Okay. So yeah, I would have to go back through recertification, and yeah. Um, so have you been in a dental chair a few times since you left? I still go to the dentist that I used to work at, so it's kind okay. of. Okay reunion every six months and it's I get to bring my kids in and they've heard a thousand stories about my kids so they love <laughs> like royalty there they get to go back to the toy chest and write oh yeah them. pick out a pencil or a witch ring or whatever they get so yeah. are you a flosser I gotta know that I suppose am I supposed to be a flosser yeah I still have to answer to those hygienists that uh that okay. you 
preach to patients. So I can't, uh, I can't slack on that. And what about, um, you know, not that this is a product placement, but my good friend Mountain Dew, he's, it's okay once in a while, right? Right, Doc? There's people that can look at a can of Mountain Dew and get a cavity. And then there's people that can drink two liters a day and never get a cavity. So it's- All right, all right. Yeah, I can't condone it. Not great for your teeth, but I've, I've seen- Plenty of people get away with that. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Well, I really appreciate your time. I'm going to wrap us up. Again, you're listening to Never Go Against the Family here, our family business podcast from the UNI Family Business Center. I'm with Dr. Joel Weiler. Maybe I should say kind of former Dr. Joel Weiler, but that sounds a little weird. So, Joel, so much appreciate your time here. Thank you for joining us, uh, sharing a little bit about your story about. I think family communication and just knowing that uh, there's always there's always a spot, right? So you never know. Um, thank you so much. Thanks, Dan. Always good seeing you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Never Go Against the Family, a podcast produced by the University of Northern Iowa Family Business Center. You can find more information about the center, membership, and upcoming events at unifamilybusinesscenter.com. As Vito Corleone advises, never go against the family.